Hello and welcome everyone to our video classroom. Today we are going to speak about the universe and the title of today's discussion is Traveling to the World of Stars. The second task for today's classroom is grammar, the relative pronoun. Let's start. Well, I am sure that you know that since ancient times people were interested in knowing more about the vast space above us, the sky. Man's interest in the sky is at the heart of three separate stories, astronomy, astrology, and the calendar. Have you ever wondered why are people so interested in discovering the universe? Why do people want to travel to other planets and invest so much in this? There might be a lot of reasons, such as curiosity, scientific research, discovering other forms of life. Whatever the reason may be, the sky remains to be the most mysterious part of our everyday life. Plants and animals grow and die, rain falls, river flows. Whilst for this we have a more direct understanding of, the sky is beyond our comprehension. If you look at the sky in a clear night, you will be able to understand why astronomy has interested people ever since ancient times. The beauty of the brilliant stars, the gleaming planet, and the silvery moon bring us a feeling of wonder, a sense of their being something greater for, than us, and makes us want to find out as much as we can about everything the sky withholds. The human has long interest in, in discovering the universe. Astronomy was the first science people recorded observations for. Astronomy remained to be the branch of science which deals with celestial objects, space, and the physical universe as a whole. The father of modern astronomy is Copernicus. He was born in Torun, Poland, in 1473. He is celebrated for his heliocentric theory of the universe, which puts the sun rather than the earth at its center. Humans have always looked up into the night sky and dreamed about space. In the latter half of 20th century, rockets were developed that were powerful enough for space exploration to become a reality. Nowadays, a spacecraft Caring people may be operated directly with humans on board, or it may be operated from ground station on Earth. This means a space mission can be carried out with no human involvement. The first human in space was Yuri Gagarin, launched by the Soviet Union on April 12, 1961. He became the first man to orbit the planet in 89 minutes. The first woman in space, cosmonaut, flew in 1963. Her name is Valentina Tereshkova. She is the first and the youngest woman to have flown in space. She orbited the Earth 48 times. She spent almost three days in space and remains the only woman to have been on a solo space in mission. However, space flight programs did not include women after her until the 1980s. Since then, many women have walked in space, although even in 2020 we still have le far less women walking in this field. From 1968 to 1972, humans have flown to the moon nine times through the Apollo program in the United States and have been in space for 19 years and 306 days on the International Space Station. The first woman to go to the moon is planned to depart in 2024, very soon. Locomotion in space is different from locomotion in Earth gravity. There are many factors that contribute to these differences and they are crucial when humans have to survive for a long time. 
The growth of plants in outer space has caused much scientific research. In the early 21st century, plants were often taken into space to be grown in a controlled environment, often called space garden. On space flights, they can be consumed as food, provide a refreshing atmosphere, and can also control cabin humidity. Eventually, astronauts have grown several varieties of lettuce, radishes, peas, zinnias, and sunflowers, and they are known to grow just fine. Have you ever been to a planetarium? Do so if you can, because there you can watch the movements of artificial stars, moon, sun, and planets as they shine on a doom-like movie screen overhead. It's an amazing experience and feeling. Have you ever dreamt of flying into space? Your dream can become true. Space Adventures Companies has created a unique and previously impossible opportunity for private citizens to experience space and to live in space for 10 days. The opportunity is possible through an application process. Space Adventures was founded in 1998 and is the only space flight company in the world providing opportunities for private astronauts to fly and live in space. Space Adventures wants to give his opportunity to as many people as possible allowing them to experience living in space, circle the Earth, or travel beyond the Earth orbit. Whilst there are many aspects we could discuss on this topic universe, I will leave this open for you to explore more by yourselves. Do you sometimes wonder if you should say the person who or the person that? Are you unsure when to use who or whose, which, or that. If so, let's see a complete review of the relative pronoun. A relative pronoun is used after a noun to make clear which person or thing we are talking about. The information that follows the pronoun is contained in what we call a relative clause. There is often some confusion about which word to use in different situations when we want to give information about a person, sometimes about an object, sometimes it is about that belongs to a person or the object. In this lesson, we will clarify the usage of relative pronouns and explain when, to, when you can drop these pronouns. The relative pronouns are who, whom, whose, which, and that. Let's have a look where and why we use relative pronouns. Relative pronouns are being used after a noun. The reason why we use them is to make it clear which person or thing we are talking about or referring to. The part of the sense sentence that gives the information about the person or thing is a defining relative clause. For example, the man who lent me the book, the book which I borrowed, the book that I have read. Let's have a look at which relative pronoun must, we must we use in each case. When referring to people we use who, whose, whom, and that. Example, the man who lent me the book or the man that lent me the book. The man whose book I borrowed. For objects we use which, that, whose. Example, the book which I borrowed or the book that I borrowed. The book which is entitled the universe or the book that is entitled the universe. The book whose title is the universe. We can also say the book the title of which is stars or the book of which the title is stars. 
In this case, the noun is always preceded by the definite article the. Can we drop the relative pronoun? Let's see. We can drop the relative pronoun who, whom, that and which if the information is related to the object of the sentence but not when it is related to the subject. Let's see some examples. The man who or that lent me the book. The man is the subject which completed the action lent. Therefore, we cannot drop the pronoun. In the sentence, the book which or that is called peace. The book is the subject of the verb is. Therefore, we cannot drop the pronoun. However, in the clause, the man who or whom I borrowed the book from, the man is the indirect object for the verb borrow. Therefore, we can drop the relative pronoun and we can get the sentence, the man I borrowed the book from. Also in the clause, the book which or that I borrowed, the book is the direct object of the verb borrow. We can drop the relative pronoun and get the clause, the book I borrowed. Just note, we cannot drop whom when it is next to the preposition. Example, the man from whom I borrowed the book. You cannot drop whose or which, for example, the man whose book I borrowed, the book the title of which is Styles, we, not, we must not drop the relative pronoun. What is a non-defining relative clause? A non-defining relative clause gives additional information about the person or the thing. If we eliminate this information from the sentence, the listener still knows who or what we are talking about. In written English, there is always a comma before a non-defining relative clause. Let's look at some examples. The man who lent me the book was the author himself, who you may have heard of. If we drop the last part, you may have heard of, the sentence is still complete. The man who lent me the book was the author himself. Let's look at another example. The book which I borrowed, which you may have read, is entitled Stars. Let's drop the non-defining clause, which you may have read, and we get the sentence. The book which I borrowed is entitled Stars. The sentence is still complete. You cannot use that instead of who or which in non-defining clause. You cannot use that instead of who in the final clause. The book which I borrowed, which you may have read, is untitled stars. You must not use that in non-defining clause. Let's just finish with some exercises. Complete the sentences with an appropriate pronoun or drop the relative pronoun. Jim is about to get married. No one has expected. Jim is about to get married, which no one has expected. We cannot drop the relative pronoun. These are people helped me. These are people who that helped me. You cannot drop the pronoun. Let's see another example. This is the gentleman, children I teach. This is the gentleman whose children I teach. You cannot drop the relative whose. In this, is this the colleague you were telling me about? Is this the colleague who that you were telling me about? You cannot drop the relative pronoun. Let's see another example. I have no idea you are talking about. I have no idea what you are talking about. We cannot drop what. Have you seen the painting they sold for one million pounds? 
Have you seen the painting which or that they sold for one million pounds? You can drop the pronoun. Have you seen the painting they sold for one million pounds? And another example. We saw many objects, the origin were unknown. We saw many objects of which the origin were unknown. We cannot drop of which. I don't know the reason this has happened. I don't know the reason that this has happened. You, you can drop the pronoun. I don't know the reason this has happened. There is much more to talk about this grammar topic relative pronouns. But I will end here. Don't forget, we link the relative close to the noun with the relative pronoun. I hope the examples I could offer you are of great help for you. Goodbye and stay safe.